You already know how to balance chemical equations, but what I'm going to show you is how to balance chemical equations of the more complicated variety. Quick review over just balancing equations in general. We have to conserve matter and mass. So when we look at a balanced chemical, sorry, when we look at a chemical equation like this one down here, it's not balanced because we don't have conservation of matter. We don't have the same amount of hydrogen atoms going in as coming out, as we can see in the pictorial diagram. So the first thing we would try to do is count how many go in, make that match how many come out. So for this one, we can see that four hydrogens go in. We need four hydrogens to come out. Since hydrogens are in the water molecule, we would need to make a second water molecule. So in the balanced equation, that would be accomplished by a coefficient of two in front of the formula for H2O. We also see that the oxygens are not balanced. I see one, two, three, four of them on the product side, but only two of them on the reactant side. What that means is a second oxygen molecule is needed, so the way we accomplish that is in the chemical equation, put a coefficient of a two there. There would just be one methane and one carbon dioxide, and you don't usually see people put those ones, but they're gonna become really important in the stoichiometry unit. When you look at an equation that's not balanced and you're like, I don't even know where to start, this is the order that we suggest. We call it Minho. We would first start with M, any metals that aren't balanced. After you've fixed those, or if all the metals are already balanced, move on to I, polyatomic ions. This is what's new in this video because you've not seen that before. Then after you've tackled those two things, you would move on to non-metals like carbon and sulfur and chlorine, saving hydrogen and oxygen for last. So here's an example of a more complicated chemical equation that we need to balance. So if you notice, we've got some parentheses. We've got some polyatomic ions in there. What I recommend you do, at least in the beginning, is get a highlighter and go through that equation and highlight the polyatomic ion. So here's NO3, here's nitrate. I'm gonna find it on the product side. Here's nitrate, I'm gonna highlight it again. Then when you go to list all the elements under the arrow that are in your equation, you'll list iron as usual, but instead of breaking this up and listing nitrogen and oxygen, listed as NO3. It's going to make it a lot faster. It's a whole lot less math, a lot less counting oxygens that you have to do. And then we also have calcium. So first thing I like to do is count reactants. So how many irons is this? It's one. How many nitrates is this? It's three. How many calciums is that? It's one. Then I come over to the product side. How many calciums is this? It's one. How many nitrates is this? it's two, and how many irons, it's one. Now in this case, the iron and the calcium, they're already balanced. My metals are taken care of. So when I look at my Minho order, I'm gonna start right here at I with the polyatomic ions because that's what's not balanced. And to fix it, they come in twos over here and in threes over here. So what I need is a lowest common multiple that they can both get to, and that's gonna be six. I'm gonna aim for six nitrates on both sides. Since they come in twos, I need a coefficient of a three on my product side. That's gonna change my calcium to three. And then three times two is gonna change my nitrates to six. Then over here, since I'm still aiming for six, I need to put a coefficient of two in front of iron nitrate. That's gonna change my irons to two, and then it gives me those six nitrates that I needed. Well, now I have to go back and fix my M, my metals. There are now two irons going in. I need to make two irons come out. There are now three calciums coming out, so I need three calciums to go in. And now we have coefficients of two and three and three and two. Now, here's one that's even more complicated. So let's do what we did before. We'll take a highlighter, and we're gonna highlight the nitrates in yellow. So here's a nitrate here. And then look on the product side. Here's a nitrate over here. I see another polyatomic ion, so I'm gonna get a different color highlighter for that. We'll do this one in blue. I see CO3, which is carbonate. It's not in parentheses, neither was this nitrate over here, but that's fine. I recognize that grouping as carbonate, and I see it again over here, so I'm gonna highlight it in blue. So what that's gonna let us do is when we list all the elements we have, I'm gonna list calcium, 
and instead of listing nitrogen and oxygen, I'm going to list NO3. Then I'm going to list sodium and CO3. That's going to save us so much time trying to add together oxygens because they're everywhere in this reaction. So let's count up reactants. How many calciums? One. How many nitrates? Two. How many sodiums? Two. How many carbonates? Just one. It's not in parentheses. It doesn't have an extra number. That three is what makes it carbonate. So that's just one. On the product side, how many calciums? One. Carbonates? One. Sodium? One. Nitrate? One. So we've got a couple of things not balanced, and we look at the Minho order and say we should fix metals first. So we should fix sodium first. We go in with two, we need to come out with two. Coefficient of two in front of sodium nitrate is gonna change sodium to two. It's also gonna distribute over to the nitrate, so I'm gonna get two nitrates. So the metals are balanced. Actually, everything is now balanced. So what we would say is the coefficients here are invisible ones, which you don't have to write, but you do have to know that they're there.